Hello, Julie here and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I am working on my design team project for Sunflowers and Doors. I'm using the digital kit called Simply Daisies. Okay, so I'm going to work on this um, daisy journal. This is the one I'm creating for my granddaughter. She's um, going to be 16 in a couple of, well next week actually. So I want it to be sort of more modernish, but I want, um, I think that the um, distressing and the anti, uh, the stitching around it still has a modern feel. So each year, generally, um, the first page of her book is a photo, her school photo, and she is still at school, so I'm planning on putting her school photo here. But I love this paper so much I really don't want to cover it up so these are in the uh, kit there's some postcards and um, this is one that I've backed with coffee dyed paper and um, stitched around actually that's too good to use as a pocket I was going to use that as my pocket but I think I've got some I've got some paper here, I might use that instead. I have got the um, postcards printed out. So perhaps I could just use one of those. I will, I think, just use one of those as my pot. It is only paper, but that's okay. It's a bit wider too, so that's, that's a bonus, that one. So I'm going to cut that out, let me get my trimmer, let's cut these, I think that um, I have actually printed these larger than the original. I've sort of stretched them out to fill the whole A4 page. Um, so they are slightly bigger than they were intended. But as it works out, that's going to be pretty good for me. I think it was this one I was going to use. That is a bit too flimsy for my liking for a pocket. So I am going to back it. I've got some white heavier paper here and I'm going to attach that to that and then trim it down. And that's going to give me the sturdiness I want for this pocket. Um, let me think. Um, I need some scrap paper, there we go, and my glue stick. Now I will stitch around this, so, oh this is it. I'm wondering where I'd put my postcard. So I'm, I will stitch around it so it doesn't really matter if I haven't got the glue right to the edge on this particular one. But I do want to get that on there and I'll burnish that down with my bone folder. Then I'll bring my trimmer back and trim that down. If I had have had my sense about me, I would have moved that over half an inch. Oh yeah, I still can. Oh, I don't think I can, that's stuck. 
I could have moved it over half an inch and then had um, have it tucked under to make like a um, gusseted pocket. But I wasn't thinking at the time. And uh, now I have to pay the price. But anyway, this will be fine. I was thinking that I might put um, an envelope or something like that in here, in the pocket, um, to hold, you know, some extra photos or see see that to see what we want to put in there. So this, as I've said previously, this is for my granddaughter, and it's just for her year. So this actually is for 2023, so you can see I'm a bit behind the, the ball game. So what I'm going to do now is, um, yeah, that's fine. I'm going to cut a divot out of the top. not to take too much of that writing. Just uh, be about the middle, do you reckon? About there. And now I'm going to take this to my sewing machine, stitch all around it, and then I'll ink around it, and then I'll be back. Okay, so there we go. I've stitched around that and um, inked around it. And now I'm going to attach that to this page. So I'm just going to use my art glitter glue when I can find that. And apply that to three sides. Well, two sides in the bottom. Right, so and position that down here. I'm going to take it right down to the bottom and then right to the edge. There we go. So I'm just going to burnish that down. I might use some of these clips just to hold that in place for a minute while it dries. I think it really doesn't take long to dry, so it probably doesn't really need this, but I want to make sure it's got a good grip. I'm not actually going to put anything in this pocket as a decoration because I really love that background so I'm quite happy to leave that like that. I might decorate the pocket a little bit here. Okay, um, let me have a look in my little box of tricks what embellishments we've got that I could use on there. Because I've got all of these embellishments that I have cut out from the kit and um, got ready to use. Okay, so I've got um, I've got a little tag there that I might use, and I've got some. What have I got here? I've got a label or a postage stamp. I could put that postage stamp there where it says fixed set stamp or I might just pop that there like so it actually goes that way and I've got some cheesecloth here I might put some of that on there behind that stamp like that yep, I think that's what I'll do or I could put a bit of lace. Uh, I'll, I'll go for cheesecloth this time. Got plenty of opportunity to use lace. 
I'll just cut a piece of this off. Spread that out a bit. Okay, now as I said, I've already um, prepared these tags and all of the embellishments of coffee of that that onto coffee dyed paper. It's actually quite thick. Actually, I've printed it on cardstock and and uh, so it's nice and sturdy. I've stitched around the edge and inked around the edge as well. So I'm going to stick that on there. And I will put glue right up to the top because it's not going to poke above the pocket, although I could make it poke above the pocket, couldn't I? Yeah, I will. Wipe some of that glue off. And just have it like so. So let's uh, make sure there's no glue where we don't want it. Actually, make sure I've got enough glue on that. Like so. Then I'm going to just pop that there. And my little stamp, glue. Now the stamps I have just printed on, well, it's probably about 100 GSM. I'm going to probably drop that down a bit like that. These will be. Well and truly dry by now. So that's a pocket, and uh, Charlie can put uh, photos or whatever she likes in there. As I said, there will be a photo of her here. I think I'm just thinking normally it's a school photo, but on this occasion she's not that keen on her school photo this year, so. Perhaps it will be just a normal everyday photo of her on here and then she can put some other things in there if she wants. And on the next page, which is like a plain sort of page, this is where I thought um, she can put her large 5 by 7 school photo in here and then I'm going to put another pocket on here that I was planning to use some pattern paper to do and this time I will make it a gusseted pocket because I'm going to make an envelope and put in there so that she can put her other like her school report photos I usually take a photo of her school report and print it out and put it in here so that she's got it uh, with her yearly book so that's my plan there and um, yeah, I'm going to cut that out. How big is this page? So the page is... Um, is that five and three quarters? I always use this ruler upside down for some reason. Yeah, five and three quarters. So if I cut my pocket six and three quarters, that will give me half inch to fold on on each side and about how high do I want it? Probably about that high I think. How high is that? Three and a half. So if I cut it four and a half. So six and three quarters by four and a half. And three quarters across and four and a half down. Oh, now while I've got this here, I'm going to cut a piece of paper to go behind that just give it a bit more sturdiness and I'm going to cut this piece 
five and three quarters by three and a half. And what is that? So five and three quarters. By three and a half. Okay. So that's just going to firm my pocket up. So let's score my pocket half an inch all around. Well, half an inch on three sides. So oh, six and a quarter. Half an inch and turn it and score it at four. Oh, is that the top or the bottom? No, that's the top. It's a trouble with using directional paper, isn't it? It's easy to get yourself caught out. Okay, so I'm going to cut the corners off. I'm just going to cut those back at the top. Because I don't want to be able to see them at the top of the pocket. And then I'm going to fold these. And then this piece should fit in there to give us that extra firmness. Oh, look at that. I have got a top that I can fold down. Well, that's excellent. So I'll cut that like so. I have because I added an extra inch, didn't I? I'll glue that down. That is the top, yes. So that gives that a bit of extra firmness as well. Oh, actually, I might just put this in and glue all of the. Oh, no, I can't glue that into there. that in there like so then I can fold that down and glue it down there oh, glue all over my fingers Okay, so let's burnish these gusseted pieces over that piece that's in there to support that. So that's quite solid now. So I'm going to once again punch a little divot in this. And... Um, that will go on there. Oh, is it going to fit? Let me check that it's going to fit. Yes, it's going to fit perfectly. Alright, so once again I'm going to go to my sewing machine. I'm going to stitch around this and then I'll ink around the edges as well and then I'll be right back. I've made that, I've stitched around it and I've inked around it. Now I'm going to attach that to my page. Now I'm going to use a trick that I saw um, Miss Paint a lot. She's doing a live every day in January uh, creating a inspiration 
journal, so ideas journal, I think she's calling it. And um, this, this is how she attaches her pockets, which I thought was a great idea. So we're going to put our bottom of our pocket where we want it. So I need to make sure I've got it on there. In place so I can still turn that page over it still sits flat so it's not right down into that groove there then she opens the pocket up burnishes along there and then taking a washi tape that she's not too keen on runs that across this lip here Sorry about the phone. So that when you're putting things into your pocket, they're not going to catch on that lip. And I find that quite annoying. Uh, when you're putting things into a pocket and they don't really go right the way down because they hit on that bottom lip. And I'm adding glue to this washi tape because it's not a good washi tape and I want to make sure that it's firmly attached and it's not going to kick up and defeat the purpose of having it there in the first place so there we go so now when you slide something into that pocket it's just going to slide in smoothly there's nothing for it to catch on this would be more relevant really if you're using a thicker card stock for your pocket and because this is paper, it's probably not going to make that much difference. But I just thought I'd show that to you because I thought it was a great idea. So now we can attach this, the rest of the pocket, to the page. And the good thing too is that uh, when you're using the art glitter glue, by the time you come to stick these up, that bottom um, panel is firmly in place. So, you know, you know you're going to have it nice and straight. It's not going to, not going to get out of place. So I'm just going to burnish those down. And set that aside to dry, not that it will take long. We've got our envelope, uh, I mean our pocket in there. Our school photo is going to go there. That um, dinging that you could hear on my phone was my granddaughter sending through some photos. So I've now got a photo I can put here. And I'm putting, I'm going to make an envelope in here that will hold um, six by five, uh, six by four photographs, and that is where I will put her school report. So I've cut this piece of paper. Um, how big is it? I think it's eight and a quarter square. Yeah, eight and a quarter square. And I'm going to use my envelope punch board, and I want to make a one that's six by four, and it says to. Do your first punch at three and three eighths. So that's what I'm going to do. Three and uh, three eighths. There. Punch and score. And the same again. And find the. I'm going to put my head over here because I need to be able to see that crease. There, punch and score. If you haven't got one of these envelope makers, um, I would recommend them. They are excellent. You can basically make any size envelope that you like and uh, you get a nice finished looking envelope, if you know what I mean by that. 
and then in the back there is a little thing here for doing your taking your points off your corners so like a corner rounder put it in straight away I'll lose it nothing sure of. so as you can see I did um, double side the printing on this as you will see that in the envelope when it's open Which way to? Uh, it's not going to matter because I'm going to put that in the in the pocket that way. I think I like that one. So I don't like this poking up here, so I'm going to just hold my bone folder across that, where, so that it's here and here where those two pieces intersect, and I'm just going to fold that like that, and I'm going to turn it back onto itself and glue that down. Okay, so before I stick this together, I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch around the pieces and around the front. Then I'll come back. Okay, so I have stitched all around it. I've stitched all around the flaps and around the actual window uh, edge of the envelope. Now I'm going to ink my edges. So how is everybody? hope everybody is doing well we're having a run of hot weather here in Adelaide and uh, I don't actually mind it and um, you know I like to go down the beach and cool down usually in the evenings we'll go down there and sit on one of the park benches at the beach and have a drink or two and enjoy the, the cool breeze um, during the day, our house is really quite well um, insulated. It's a double brick house and it doesn't get hot very quickly. We can have like very hot weather for three or four days before it gets hot inside. But I have to admit that I did heat the place up a bit today with some cooking. So that wasn't really all that clever. So now I'm going to stick my envelope together so I'm going to run a bead of glue along this edge and along this edge and I'm also going to run glue along this edge and this edge and this just helps to make sure that there's no, nothing to catch on the inside of the envelope So just burnish that down quite firmly. Check that we haven't got any glue in there that we don't want in there. And then I'm going to ink the outside edges of the envelope. I'm going to do that on both the front and the back. I don't know. I'm actually um, liking the back side of the envelope, I guess you'd call it. Um, these days and I don't know that I really want to embellish the front too much because um, it's going to sit in my pocket and while it is a gusseted pocket I don't want it to be too bulky because there will probably be quite a few photos in there so that's the one where she can just put whatever she likes in and this is the one for the school photos 
so that can sit there like that and once she's got all those photos in there I don't think I really need to embellish that I might just put a little tab across there to close that or perhaps I could put one of these labels across there yeah I might just do that and just glue that along this edge I can actually glue it along the bottom as well so I think I'll do that that's been inked yes I know it's not compulsory to ink but I do like the look of it so I do tend to ink just about everything that I make okay so that can go there and that just keeps our little envelope closed and once she's got her photos in there you know that might be a lot bulkier I might put a little something on that I think just for just for a little bit and I think I would like something white on it um, I've got these um, die cut pieces that I have die cut from dies that I've got and um, actually that see that blends in too much doesn't it you'd want the white side I've got all sorts of bits and pieces in here doesn't look doesn't look right I don't really know what I want on there to be honest I don't know what I really want. What about something in a dark green? Dark green looks like, right, doesn't it? Dark green looks good. So why don't I put that across there like so? Um, If I stick that down there, would that still? No, it wouldn't. I'd have to. What's the other one we got there? bit of cheesecloth behind that or um, that bit of an off cut of cheesecloth let me see what that looks like I think I'm going to cut something a bit more solid. I've got some sari silk and this colour goes nicely with this combination so I thought what I might do is cut this off there like so and um, just stick this on here sort of gathered up like that. I'm just going to basically cover this label with glue and then scrunch this up onto it like so and hold that in place for a few minutes until it grabs being out there to glue it shouldn't take too long Bit of glue under there so that's not going to be flapping about. And I have this vellum leaf, it's a pale green vellum, and I thought I might just add that on there. I can actually go up a bit like that. And um, 
put a little flower on there. And I could make a flower. And I could make quite a couple of layers. I could add that on there like so. Perhaps I should assemble the flower and see if I like it. First of all, I'm going to attach this vellum leaf. I'm putting um, a reasonable amount of glue on this and basically all over it because it's sticking to fabric I want to make sure it's going to stay in place and because I'm putting glue over the whole thing I'm hoping that that means you won't be able to see the glue as a different idea if you know what I mean You can see how much glue I've got on that. Anyway, stick that on like that and um, looks like this one didn't cut all that well. Oh no, there's two there. Is it? No, there's not. Okay. Get a mat and a little flower shaping tool and just give this a little bit of shape. I'm not looking for perfection here. Actually I should, um, what I might will do is put some yellow in the middle and get some yellow. I mean, it's not a daisy flower, you can see that, but at least if I put the yellow in the middle, it'll blend in with the colour scheme. Okay, just get some yellow ink. Got some yellow, and this one's called Fossilised Amber. And I've got a finger dobber. And I'm just going to try this on this piece. Yes, that's fine. So I'm just going to dab that in the middle. Okay. And I've got a water brush here. I might just sort of blend that out a little bit. It looks a bit blobbish. So, I'll have to let that dry a bit, won't I, before I attach those two. How are we going here? That's sticking. That yellow. If this, um, if this is, doesn't work how I want it to, it's not too hard to reprint the paper and make another envelope. be all right. I think it's going to be fine. Okay, so while that's drying, I can have a think about what I want to do with the, to embellish the pocket. So, um, so that's going to go in there like so. I will see that. Um, now I was thinking I could put some of that on here as well, although I don't think so, it's too bulky. Oh, I could cut it down, couldn't I? I was thinking of putting this chipboard flower on there, and I was going to tie around it with some of this, but now I think what I will do is use some of this green. Probably cut that off about there. And I want to trim this down so it's very fine. 
about that much. And I'm going to tie that around that. All fingers and thumbs. And I am not a great bow tie, I can tell you that. So I'm going to just tie a knot. And I'm going to pop that on there. I don't want it that way or that way. I think it should go that way. Do I want it to go like that and cut some of this off? I think I will cut some of that off. And um, something behind it, that's too long too. Don't mind if it hangs out the bottom. Don't mind at all. Now, what can I put behind it? Um, I still have some of these little labels. Got a label there. And what else have I got in my little box of tricks? I use these um, these plastic boxes to keep all of the things I'm using for a particular project. Oh, we've got some words here. We could use something like that. Um, all in one spot so that I'm not hunting around all over the place for them. Um, got some tags here. I've got heaps and heaps of tags here so anyway. uh, I've got some washi strips but I don't think they'll stand out enough got another tag but do I want to put that on the tag instead of the label not really because that tag, you know, gets lost. I need some plainer things, don't I? So that's what I need. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a tag out of some coffee dyed paper. I don't want to waste that. So I've got coffee dyed paper here. see what size this is because that's pretty good size actually so it is one and three quarters by oh, three and an eighth so Now because it's going on to that pocket, I don't think I need to reinforce it because it's going to be sitting on there completely. Yes. Alright, so I'm going to use this tag to cut my little divots off. And I'm going to, oh, 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 there they are. thought I'd lost my little flowers. I'm going to ink around this and then I'm going to sew around it as well. So I will do that and then I will come back and we'll finish putting this decoration onto this pocket. I'm not going to put an eyelet or anything coming off the top of this tag. I think that... Um, 
there's enough going on here that I don't really need that. Yeah, I think that looks good. Okay, I might even emboss this with an embossing folder. All right, I will take this to the sewing machine, stitch around it, and then I'll probably emboss it, and then I'll be back. So I've done that, and I used this embossing folder to emboss it. Um, I don't know what brand this embossing folder is. I can't even remember buying it, to be honest. So there we go. So it's, you can see it's got those little daisies on it, and I thought that I might just rub over that lightly. Just to highlight that pattern a little bit. Not too dark. Okay, so I'm going to pop that down there. And I'm going to pop that on top of it. Like that. So let's do that. Like so. Now this um, chipboard, let me have a look. Here we go. This comes from Denise Bodie Designs, and there's three in the packet. Um, they're two dollars fifty. They're called herbs, and this is what you get in the pack. So you get that one, that one, and that one. I've just painted this one white, and um, yeah, I think they're really cute. So I'll put a link to these in the description box if you're interested. Denise is an Australian. Um, person and uh, she designs and cuts all these chipboard pieces herself so yeah well worth looking at if you are looking for chipboard as I said oh god look at that um, they do make their own they cut their own okay so let's attach this now I'm not too keen about the way that's poking up in the air I might have to I want to add a little bit of yellow to this actually the those parts would be green because that's the underside isn't it it's not the inside I think I'll leave it white okay so I'm going to add plenty of glue to this because I don't want it coming off and I don't want little these little bits to catch on anything going in and out Just put a little bit of glue on there so that stays down a little bit there keep that in place put a clip on that to hold it in place and that one will hold it in place hopefully that little Dob of glue won't, won't show too much when it's dry. Okay, now um, we're thinking about putting a word on there. So um, I did see one on here that I thought would be good. Um, well, we got one there that says Daisy, so why don't we use that? think around it. I think I might lay that across the top like so. Get caught by now. There we go. So where's my envelope gone? Here we go. Oh, that's right. We've got a flower to finish with this. Now, now they're dry enough. So let's, um, let's make some room here so we can see what we're doing. Big mess. Big mess. Okay. So 
I'm going to pop a little bit of glue there and then I'm going to position this one well, actually I'll do it the other way put a little bit of glue on this one and pop this one on top like so just offset that so that um, the flower looks fuller. Pop that on there and then use our shaping tool to give that a bit of shape. Just push it down a bit in the middle. And then we can put that on there. I think I might um, just put a little bit of um, just a little bit of black in the center just a few little dots I think so just gives it that little bit more definition that you can okay so I'm going to stick that on there I don't want that to be too bulky because it's going to go in the pocket. I'm going to flatten that down a little bit, but it still has a little bit of definition. You'll notice in the photos at the end of the video that I do add a second flower, which is slightly larger than this one. And if I put it in the pocket that way, it will um, not be down in the thing and get bumped all the time. Okay, well, another big mess on my desk here. I guess everybody's the same. We all make a big mess, don't we? All the stuff that we drag out to make a couple of little things. So that can go in there like so. So... That will probably do me for today. I'm going to go and get these photos that my granddaughter sent me this evening printed and um, then I can start putting them in. Okay, the other thing I can do too is, um, you know, some of these things, I can cut the daisy out as a fussy cut and use them as an embellishment like that. I might do a few of those. Um, see how I go okay so that's my video for today a couple of easy pockets and a little bit of decorating and an envelope and um, yeah so I guess that uh, this will end up big gator math like they all do but with that binding that um, tab binding and there is a video showing how I did that I'll link that in the description box below if you like too um, yeah it will it will handle it and I have already worked out what I'm going to do for my closures so a reason I haven't put my closure on yet is because I want to wait until the book's finished and see how fat it is because the closure has to be the right size okay so that's it for today thank you for joining me and um, if you're not a subscriber already I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up all those good things tell everybody or your friends about my channel and yeah thank you for joining me and i hope you can join me when i post my next video okay bye